Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's Library of Public Health Forum. Um, so we'll have presentations on antimicrobial resistance and opioid addiction. So first of all, a little bit about myself. My name is Aaron, and I'm a current high school senior at James Logan. And I'm the founder of this library public health forum, and I wanted to educate the public about the certain uh, current public health issues because I, I think it's important for everyone to know this. So I'd like to start off my presentation with the top two uh, U.S.-based outbreaks. So first we have uh, salmonella infections. There have been 59 illnesses, 23 hospitalizations, and the, the, the disease passes through the stomach and colonizes the intestines. Some symptoms you may have are diarrhea, vomiting, dehydration, and high fever. And in this case, the source is pet turtles, but generally salmonella infections come from unprepared uh, meats or eggs. So make sure to prepare your food properly and wash your hands. Uh, my, uh, symptoms are generally mild, so no treatment is needed. But if symptoms are severe, you may need antibiotics. Next up, we have listeria infections. There have been two illnesses and two hospitalizations. Um, it, the listeria infects cells in the intestines and spreads basal laterally. You, some symptoms you may experience are fever, muscle aches, and tiredness. And the source is contaminated ice cream, so do not eat recalled ice cream. And symptoms are generally mild, so no treatment is needed, and uh, sometimes you may need antibiotics. And a notable worldwide outbreak recently was the Nipah virus outbreak in India. Um, the mechanism is that the virus has two glycoproteins on the surface, which allows it to enter the host cell. It has a G glycoprotein, which can allow it to attach to receptors onto the, on, on the cell membrane. And then that, once it attaches it, it causes a sh uh, shape change in the F glycoprotein to activate it, which allows it to like, fuse the virus in cell membranes, which makes the virus enter the cell. Some symptoms you may face are acute respiratory infection, and sometimes you may experience encephalitis, which is slowing up the brain. Uh, this is a zoonotic illness, so avoid contact with infected animals, in this case bats and pigs, and indirect contact with infected people can also lead to transmission. Um, support, supportive care measures are generally given, but if it's severe, you may need intensive support. So let's start off uh, today's presentation uh, on antimicrobial resistance uh, with some very uh, introductory information. So here's what we'll cover today, and First of all, what are microbes? Microbes are essentially organisms too small to be seen uh, by the naked eye. They include bacteria, fungi, viruses. Most of them are harmless, but some of them can invade the body and cause disease. And then we actually have developed antimicrobials to counter this. And in uh, 1928, uh, the penicillin, one of the first antimicrobials, was discovered. However, my, uh, microbes can actually start to survive exposure to antimicrobials using a few mechanisms, which can include blocking entry into the cells, pumping out antimicrobials using active transport, which means using ATP to pump a molecule against its concentration gradient, and synthesizing an enzymes to break down the compound. So AMR, or antimicrobial resistance, is essentially a natural process in which microorganisms evolve to survive exposure to antimicrobials. This can occur through genetic mutation or transformation which is picking up genetic material from the background. And it can ex this process can accelerate because of overuse or misuse of antibiotics, uh, environmental contamination, and suboptimal vaccination. So let's talk about how AMR occurs. So when somebody takes an antibiotic, most of the germs in their system are actually killed. So at first there's a lot of germs, but a few of them may be drug resistant. Um, this can be due to their nature and or, or like how the drug functions. And because these are these bacteria are anti uh, drug resistant, these are the ones that survive the antibiotic. And then they are allowed to grow without much competition, and they become the majority of the, of the my, uh, microorganisms in your body. And then this actually increases the chance that they can pass on the genetic information and give genetic, uh, give antimicrobial resistance to bacteria so that can actually harm us. And that is sort of how superbugs form. So WHO has identified 12 bacteria which pose the greatest threat, as these bacteria have developed a resistance to some of our most powerful drugs, in some cases multiple of them, which is a very dangerous situation. So here are some more examples. And so why is AMR such a threat? 
So when bacteria do not respond to first line or second line antibiotics, patient morbidity and mortality increase. And also, like, let's t say for example, let's take a multi-drug resistant tuberculosis. Tuberculosis by itself is already the most dangerous disease that we have, has uh, the greatest number of deaths. Now couple that with multi-drug resistance, that's extremely dangerous. Now tuberculosis is spread through airborne transmission, which means if an infected person coughs, talks, or sneezes, droplets will be spread into the air and they will hang in the air for a while, which makes it very easy for somebody else to get infected. Now generally to take precautions, you'll need a respiratory mask like an N95. Multi-drug resistance makes this bacteria extremely dangerous because if your immune system is unable to fight it off, drugs are not able to treat it very well and you have a very high chance of mortality. And AMR is a very significant threat because there have been no new registered class of antibiotics since 1987, which means we have a limited choice of antibiotics. AMR is a natural process, so as, develop, as bacteria are constantly developing more and more resistance, we, have a, we so far have a limited number of weapons to use against them, so eventually we will lose, unless we do something about it. So I think this problem doesn't have enough attention, has enough attention, attention as it deserves. So here is a diagram of the classes of antibiotics being discovered in the timeline. And you can see that from 1987 to now, there's been like 30 years in which you haven't discovered any, any new antibiotics, which is a concern. Mm. So AMR increases, uh, the chance of that happening increases through use or misuse of antibiotics. Um, like people should not just be taking an antibiotic because they have a minor, uh, if they have a minor infection, they should be used for more serious cases. <coughs> the more we use antibiotics, the more chance they have to develop AMR. We should also avoid poor IPC practices. And patients with severe and chronic underlying diseases or critically ill patients with prolonged hospital stays are a severe risk, along with patients who are, who are immunocompromised. For example, somebody who has gotten an organ transplant, they have to be on immunosuppressants, or else there will be a rejection of the organ transplant. And then this makes, makes it so that their immune system is not very functional. So if they contract a drug-resistant bacteria, they, their immune system will not fight it off, and drugs may not be treated effectively, which means their chance of dying has greatly increased. So to combat AMR, I want to mention four points. First of all, let's talk about surveillance and monitoring. It is important to know what we're up against. So it is important to collect data regarding antimicrobial resistance in order to guide decision making. And also, this is a more a systemic change, but it's important to implement to, in, to ensure proper IPC practice is being followed. We should also be uh, in, implementing a uh, better uh, antimicrobial stewardship, which is a coordinated program and effort that promotes appropriate use of antimicrobials to prevent the spread of AMR. And we should uh, focus on four main points here. The right drug, the right dose, de-escalation to pathogen-directed therapy, which means decreased use of broad range antibiotics, and then we should also focus on having the right duration of therapy. This is more of a hospital thing, but it's important that to have better environmental cleaning and medical device contamination because of envi a contaminated environment leads to greater risk of spreading infectious agents, so it's important to clean high touch items. And here's a chart of the survivability or how long it takes for the bacteria to like how, how long they can survive like, for the most common um, drug resistant bacteria in hospital. Wow. I wanted to mention some uh, emerging technologies we've been researching in order to combat antimicrobial resistance. First of all, phage therapy. It uses bacterial phages, which are the natural enemy of bacteria, to sort of fight these uh, drug resistant bacteria. And why I think this is a very promising uh, treatment is because bacterial phages can evolve along with uh, bacteria. So it's not like antibiotics that you constantly have, constantly have to discover new classes of anti antibiotics. This treatment evolves along with the problem. But I feel like this could have, uh, this needs more research because there is a possibility that the bacteriophages can jump to attack humans, just like zoonotic illnesses. Uh, for example, um, HIV originally attacked like chimpanzees or some sort of primate but then they eventually jumped to attack on humans. So in case something similar like that happens, or like something like swine flu, we should always watch out, we should do some more research on phage therapy. 
We've also been using certain compounds to make bacteria more sensitive to antibiotics so we can lower the dosage use, which can decrease the chance of AMR occurring. And we've been trying to find more antimicrobial compounds from natural sources. Now, I'm sure everybody in this room has heard of CRISPR-Cas9, but it is possible to try to use gene editing to fight them all. Now, CRISPR-Cas9 works through a mechanism of recognition, cleavage, and repair. So the Cas9 enzyme has a guide RNA attached to it. The guide RNA uh, is made of, it has 18 to 20 nucleotides, and it can recognize the segment that the Cas9 enzyme should cut because the, the, the RNA, the nucleotides, will match with the segment as they will have matching base pairs. Now once that's been located, the Cas9 can do double-stranded DNA breaks, and the body will repair the DNA, which will sort of edit out the section. Now this can be used to edit out the segments of genetic information that encode for mechanisms that help bacteria uh, uh, have antimicrobial resistance. For example, if we cut out a segment that allows a bacteria to synthesize enzymes, uh, which can break down antimicrobials, that will, um, that will combat AMR. And we've also been developing nanocarriers to improve the plasma profile of short half-life drugs. So what this means is that drugs are known as xenobiotics. Xenobiotics are uh, compounds that do not originate within the body. So the body will recognize these as toxins and will try to chemically alter them to make them easier to flush it out. Now, many drugs, they, they're broken down pretty quickly. So the nanocarriers, they, they hold on to these drug particles and they release them at like lower, uh, like more gradually at lower doses. So then the concentration of the drug can stay uh, can stay at a good level for a longer period of time, making the drug more effective. And nanocarriers can also protect antibiotics from, anti uh, from bacterial enzymes, which can combat AMR. So what everyone can do is one, practice hand proper hand hygiene. Your hands are the most dirty area of your body as you're constantly touching other surfaces. So if you proper, uh, practice proper hand hygiene, you will greatly uh, decrease your chances of getting sick. You should also avoid close contact with sick people, and when you have to, you must take necessary precautions. For example, airborne transmission needs respiratory masks, uh, respirator masks. Do not use anti, uh, do not overuse antibiotics, and do not take medicine when you do not have to. One other thing I want to mention is that when you are prescribed medicine, you should take all of it. For example, uh, take uh, stick with the regimen. For example, let's say you have tuberculosis. Even though you, you may feel better after taking the medication for a few days, do not just stop, even just because of that, and just like, leave the medicine. You should take all of the medicine to ensure that you have gotten rid of all the tuberculosis, because if you haven't, there may be some remaining, and then that bacteria can grow again, and then cotton the disease can flare up again, and you know, in a, in a, it can also become drug resistant in the process, which makes the de disease much more dangerous. So it's important you stick with the regimen of uh, that you've been prescribed. And finally, I believe that people should bring more attention to antimicrobial resistance. And one final point I wanted to bring up is that we should advocate against the use of antibiotics, like as much use of antibiotics in agriculture and agriculture. A lot of antimicrobial resistance develops there because livestock are generally kept in unsanitary conditions. So, it is, so they, farmers actually put antibiotics in the livestock food in order to ensure that they don't get sick. And that greatly increases the chance of developing AMR. In 2014 in China, they, this practice actually has got, gotten pretty bad and they detected bacteria that have become resistant to our last resort drugs, which is very scary news. So I hope that people can deal with this problem before it becomes too late. So if you have any questions, you may ask. You mentioned that uh, microbials include the fungi and virus too. Uh, why is this presentation does not cover uh, fungi and virus? Oh, this is a very broad topic, so I just want to focus on one area. But next, uh, uh, we can talk about resistance to uh, for fungi and virus next time in a future presentation. Right. Anyone else? Right. Why? Why the? Um, do you think it is? Is it uh, possible that we can discover more uh, superbugs in the hospital today? Well, simple, because um, in hospitals, it's, it's a congregation of all these ill patients, which there's a lot of microbes to begin with. 
and we're using a lot of antimicrobials or like antibiotics to fight off these diseases. And the use of antibiotics itself allows for the chance of uh, AMR to develop because if bacteria survive, and, they can, and when they develop it, they can spread it to other bacteria which can cause there to be superbugs. Thank you. All right. Thanks everyone for attending my presentation. You can check out our website at goodassy.com slash public health forum or PHF. Here are my references. And we have ne our next presentation on December 9th at 12.30. And next up we have uh, Fatima presenting on opioid addiction.